Now in this question, what I've done is sketch what we're given. And we're told then that we've got this particle here, which is hanging freely on these light inextensible strings here. And it's in equilibrium. Now the weight of it is 24 Newtons. So we need to mark that in, that acts downwards. So if we just mark that in as 24 Newtons. Now we've got to find in part A the force P and in part B the force Q. So how do we do something like this? Well, there's two ways that spring to mind. One way is just by resolving vertically and horizontally. And the other way is by constructing a triangle of forces. And I'll do both methods for you so you can compare which method you prefer. So we'll start with resolving the forces. And I'm assuming that you're familiar with splitting forces into components. If not, just go on my website and look under tutorials on resolving or splitting forces. Now, if we're going to resolve, then we need to resolve horizontally and vertically. So I'm going to put in a couple of dotted lines there. So resolving upwards, okay, resolving vertically, let's see what we've got. Well, we've got part of the P that acts upwards in this direction. So we need to know what that resolve component is. It's going to be P sine 30. Remember, it doesn't include this angle, okay, of the 30 degrees in this 90 degrees. You could say P cos uh, 60 degrees, because that makes 90, but I must prefer to use the angle that you're given. So if it excludes the angle, it's going to be sine of that angle, P sine 30 then. So P sine 30 acts upwards. The other component P would act out in this direction, and it's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving, so it doesn't come into play. 24 newtons, the weight acts totally down in the opposite direction to what we've got here. So all of that 24 newtons acts in the opposite direction. So that's minus 24. The Q, well that's perpendicular to direction we're resolving in. So we don't need to include that in the equation. It has no effect. So this is the resultant force. And because it's in equilibrium, that resultant force must equal zero. So you can see that we can rearrange this to make P the subject if we add 24 to both sides and divide by the sine of 30. And if you do that, 24 divided by the sine of 30 turns out to be 48. So the value of P will be 48. 48 Newtons then is that force. Now to get Q, what I've got to do now is resolve horizontally. So if we just come down here and we resolve horizontally, it doesn't matter which way you go because it's an equilibrium, I'm going to go towards the left. It just means that in my equation, Q will be a positive value because all of Q acts in that direction. So we'll start off with that one, Q. As for the weight, that's perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so it doesn't come into effect. The P, though, is inclined to this direction, and we need to think of it as two components, one in that direction and one vertically up. The one vertically up is perpendicular to the direction we're resolving in, so it has no effect. We're only interested in the one that goes out towards the right. It contains the angle of 30 degrees, so it will be P cos 30 when it contains the angle. And that force acts in the opposite direction to the positive sense, so it's going to be minus P cos 30 degrees. There's all our forces. The resultant force must equal zero because it's in equilibrium. So therefore, Q is going to be equal to P cos 30 degrees. We know what P is, it was 48. So therefore Q would equal 48 then multiplied by the cosine of 30 degrees or cos 30. And if you do that, 
you'll end up with 41.569 and so on. And if we round that, say, to one decimal place, it'll be 41.6 newtons, okay, to one dp. Okay, so there you go. There's Q, 41.6 then. Now, I did say that you could do it an alternative way. You've got three forces acting on a particle in equilibrium. So those three forces must give you a closed polygon, in this case, a triangle, because there is no resultant force. So if you're drawing that triangle, you can take any one of these three forces, first of all. It doesn't matter which one you take. Let's suppose we take the 24 newtons first, the weight. Then that acts downwards. So we'll just mark that in as downwards, and we'll put 24 there, 24 newtons. Now we've at this end of the line, we now follow it with another force. It can either be P or Q. Again, it doesn't matter. You'll get the same result at the end of the day. I'm going to choose P, so I go from here and I go outwards like that. That would be P. And I know it has to go this far up because when we join on to the end here, with Q, it's got to join on to the end here. And Q is horizontal, so you'd expect to get something like that. OK, so there's our forces P and Q in this right angle triangle. Now, we know an angle here is 30 degrees, so that 30 degrees must show up somewhere in this triangle. Well, this angle is 30 degrees that P makes with the horizontal. So it must mean that this angle is 30 degrees. It's alternate to the 30 over here. I could use this one as 60 if you wanted, but I'm just going to use the 30. So by basic trigonometry, we can work out what P and Q are. If I'm going to do P, I can see that 24 newtons represents the opposite side and P is the hypotenuse. So opposite over hypotenuse is the sine of an angle. So you can see that sine of the angle 30 degrees equals the opposite side, 24, over P. And if I rearrange this, make P the subject, P will equal 24 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. And if you work that out, you end up with 48. OK? Now to get Q, plenty of ways I could get Q at this stage. I know P, I know this side, I could use Pythagoras' theorem. Q would be the square root of 48 squared minus 24 squared. Or I could use trigonometry. And again, because I know P, I could use the cosine, the cosine of 30 degrees equals Q over 48. Or I could use tan, tan of 30 degrees equals 24 over Q. So got quite a few choices here. Now suppose I decide to use, say, tan, tan of 30 degrees. It's a good one to use purely because it's independent of P, just in case I got P wrong. Tan of 30 is the opposite, 24, over the adjacent side, Q. And if I rearrange this for Q, Q equals 24 divided by the tan of 30 degrees. Work that out, and you end up with what we had above, 41.569 and so on, which when rounded to, say, one decimal place, is 41.6. So Q is going to be 41.6 to one decimal place. So it gives you an alternative way of working that out. All right?